This Sunday marks the end of the classic season with Liège Baston Liège, the oldest monument in cycling. La Doyenne, the old lady as it's known, consists of 258 kilometers for the men and 135 kilometers for the women. Liège is the hilliest of the one-day classics, usually containing around 4,000 meters of climbing in the men's race. So let's take a look at the contenders for both races. So often the nearly man in the past few seasons, second in Liège in 2015 and twice the runner-up in Flesh Wallon, 25-year-old Julian Alaphilippe has just taken the biggest single-day race win of his career at Wednesday's Flesh. Having been placed perfectly into the bottom of the Mur de Wii by his quick-step team, no one really got close to the Frenchman when he kicked to the line. Alaphilippe certainly looks to be a good bet to continue the Wolfpack's dominance in Liège. Anna van der Breggen has continued her dominant streak in the Ardennes Classics with an incredible fourth win in a row at Flesh Wallon on Wednesday. Coupled with wins at Strada Bianca and the Tour of Flanders already this season, as well as her win in the age last year, the Olympic champion must go into Sunday as the favourite. And that's before we even mention her incredible Bowles Dolmans team. What can you say about Alejandro Valverde? Four times the winner of Liège, Valverde has the chance this year to match the record for the most wins at La Doyenne. That record held by none other than Eddie Merckx. And it seems hard to bet against him. While most riders begin to think about retiring when they reach this age, the 37-year-old seems to only get better. Unquestionably one of the strongest riders at Amstel Gold, the only worry for Valverde is that he could find the rest of the field waiting for him to make his move. How he deals with this, only time will tell. Is Cassia Nuyadoma the best climber in the women's peloton? On a day, it's hard to argue otherwise, but to call her solely a climber is a bit unfair. Just look at her 50km solo attack to win the opening stage of the 2017 Tour of Britain. The Canyon Tram riders' results this year have been characteristically strong, and she's really outside of the top 10. To win in Liège, she would likely need to finish alone, like she did in Trofeo Alfredo Binder this March as once she commits to a move, there are few riders harder to bring back. It has been a strong, if slightly unremarkable, start to the season for Roman Kreuziger, but he's clearly peaking at the right moment. Taking second at Amstel Gold, then fourth at Flesh Wallon, Kreuziger has been one of the most consistent riders in the Ardennes. The Czech will need to finish solo in order to be sure of the win, but Amstel Gold showed he isn't afraid to roll the dice and put in a dig and his results at flesh shows he isn't a slouch in an uphill sprint. The world time trial champion Annemiek van Flurten put in probably the gutsiest ride of the season so far with her podium finish in the Tour of Flanders. She sprinted home for third on the day, despite crashing with around 60 kilometers to go and dislocating her shoulder. Always impressive when the gradients increase, as illustrated with fourth in Wednesday's Flesh Will On, Van Flurten will be supported by a strong Mitchelton Scott team, including the third place finisher at Amstel Gold, Amanda Spratt. For a number of years, it wasn't clear what sort of riding Tim Wellens was best suited to, but his results this season, including wins at the Route del Sol and Flesh Brabanson, have shown he deserved to be counted amongst the best all rounders in the professional peloton. Seventh of Flesh Wallon shows he's peaking just at the right moment. Now never one to shy away from a solo attack, the Lotto Sudal rider would be hoping that the big favourites mark each other out, allowing him to sneak away to victory. <music> Ashley Mormon Passio is maybe not on many people's favourites list for Liège, but a second place in Wednesday's Flesh Wallon further underlines what she deserves to be. The Cervelo Bilia rider has only finished outside of the top 10 on one occasion this year. Now that is consistency. One of the strongest riders in the women's peloton, the South African finished sixth in Liège last year. Cervelo Bilia aren't one of the strongest teams on paper, but Mulman Passio has showed time and time again that she doesn't often need team help to perform. If it wasn't for a terribly timed puncture, Sunweb's Michael Matthews would almost certainly have been challenging for the win at Amstel Gold, having made the lead group coming into the final. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be, but showed that Matthews is at least at the same level that led to his fourth place finish in last year's Liège. 
add to the mix a mightily impressive fifth place in Flesh Will On, and it's clear the Australian will be a major threat. If Matthews can make it to the finish in reasonable shape, he'll likely be the best sprinter in any group. The most successful women's rider of all time, the European champion goes into every race as a rider to watch. Voss's rider, the recent Flesse Brabanson, underlined her incredible strength on the bike. She went on the attack with over 60 kilometers still to race, and despite being caught on the last of the finishing circuits, still had the legs to sprint to third place. Taking the bunch sprint for 10th at Amstel Gold shows there'll be very few riders in Sunday's race that will want to come to the finish with her. Who do you think will win Liège Baston Liège? Let us know in the comments section below. Now, as you know, Liège is a bit of a hilly race. So how about checking Cyanema showing you how to ride steep climbs? <laughs>